Okay, so here we have a car on a banked track. Okay, it's going around in a circle, and the circle is sort of um, there's your car, there's the track, there's the horizontal, and the circle that this car's going around in, if we assume it's in the same place on the banking all the time, is it's going around a circle in this plane here. Okay, now there's the weight of the car is acting downwards like that, vertically downwards, and then there's a normal contact force from the track acting this way. Okay, and it's the we know that there must be a centripetal force acting towards the centre of the circle here, okay? And this normal contact force, we'll just call it a reaction force R, or you could call it force normal, whatever you want to call it, okay? That, we'll just call it reaction force in this case. That reaction force is uh, the reaction force of the car, it's the reaction force of the track pushing on the car, okay? So the track is pushing on the car that way, um, because the car is pushing on the track due to the force of its weight pulling it down onto the track. Okay, now it's the uh, component of this force in this direction he here that provides the centripetal force. So it's the component of this reaction force. So that reaction force can be split up into two components: the vertical component, which is equal to mass times gravity. So the vertical component, like this, that's equal to mg. Okay, because that is balancing the the, um, the weight of the car, that's the opposite force, that's the component of the reaction force that's directly opposite to the weight and stops the car from sinking into the track or from floating, so to speak. But there's also this horizontal component like this, okay, and that horizontal component there, okay, that horizontal component there is equal to mv squared on r. The horizontal component of this reaction force is providing the centripetal force. Okay, now this if you if you redraw this diagram here, okay, so let's redraw it. There's your that's your horizontal component, that's your vertical component, and then this is your reaction force R. Okay, so we know this is equal to mg. We know this is equal to mv squared over R, this horizontal component. The other thing that hopefully you can see is that this angle here is theta. So this angle here is theta, it's the same angle as this, okay. So hopefully using your mathematics you can see that because basically what we've got here is, is this triangle pivoted into that position there. So this triangle is equivalent to this triangle, so that theta is the angle there. So this component here, mg, if we do this according to trigonometry, this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse, this is opposite. So we know that cos theta is adjacent over... Uh, hypotenuse and sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse and tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so if we want to work out this adjacent here, we're going to have to do h cos theta. So mg, this vertical component, is equal to r cos theta. Okay, and mv squared over r is equal to r, because this is opposite and this is a hypotenuse, sine theta. Okay, so that's really important to be aware of. Uh, perhaps the other thing to be aware of is this. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so it's equal to mv squared over r divided by mg. Okay, and if you simplify that, that's basically going to be mv squared over r uh, multiplied by 1 over mg. Okay, and that is going to give you mv squared over rmg. And the m's cancelled out like that. So you've got v squared over rg is tan theta. Now what I should say here as well is all of these equations are true, uh, provided there's no friction. We're assuming there's no friction on this track and that it is frictionless, okay? Purely frictionless track.